This is Twit. These are, these are not things that we normally talk about on the show, but this is such a big change and a big deal. I figured it really made sense. Uh, Qualcomm announced last week that it is buying Arduino. And uh, boy, for, for hackers and makers, Arduino has been just part of the landscape for a long time. Really kind of kicked off a lot of, I guess, my generation's tinkering with electronics. And uh, so... You know, Qualcomm does not necessarily have the best reputation. And so there are some people that are very afraid of what this is going to mean for the Arduino ecosystem. And for anyone that says, oh, well, there are no actual Arduino products that I use all of the time. So this doesn't affect me at all. Um, the other side of this is that the Arduino sort of API has just become one of the absolute standards for programming microcontrollers. Um, in the uh, the projects that I work with, you know, the, none of these are Arduino chips, but it still uses the Arduino API, like the Arduino framework, you could call it. It's just the sort of the standardized way to work on a lot of these different MCUs. Um, and then along with this, and this is really interesting, Qualcomm has announced that they're going to be re releasing the Arduino Uno Q, Q standing for Qualcomm. And that is going to be a single board computer with a Qualcomm Dragonwing QRB2210, which is a quad core ARM Cortex A53, uh, a Qualcomm Adreno 702 GPU. It's got Wi Fi, it's got Bluetooth. I don't see how much RAM it's going to have on it, but this is, you know, this is very intention intentionally a um, Raspberry Pi kind of a. Uh, uh, it's it's the single board computer. It's Qualcomm trying to use Arduino to break into that single board computer market. It's still quite hot. Everybody loves everybody loves the Raspberry Pi, and then you've got you know Orange Pi and a whole bunch of other groups that are doing similar things. Um, and what I worry about, knowing some of the things that Qualcomm has done in the past, I, I sort of suspect that Qualcomm is trying to tap into that Raspberry Pi goodness but they don't understand anything about what makes the Raspberry Pi really great. It's not the hardware. It's not that the Raspberry Pi has such amazing hardware. Although with like the Pi 5 and the Pi 500 and the Pi 500 Plus, you're, we're actually getting to the point to where it's pretty decent hardware. It's not the hardware that makes it good. It's the fact that it's supported well for a very long time and that there's such a really good ecosystem and community around it. And that's what makes the Pi special. Uh, and I just, I just don't know that Qualcomm, even with their acquisition of Arduino, uh, if they're going to put that kind of support into it. And so, you know, the thing that I really fear that I anticipate is that there will be a release of some flavor of Linux with a very customized kernel. It may be open source. It, you know, likely they'll do like what the license requires. Now, okay, here's the sources for it. Here's this one this one distro, you know, Arch or Debian or maybe Fedora or Mint. I've seen all of them. Um, I've seen companies do this with all of them. Okay, here's your distro. These, this image has this the kernel packed into it. Everything is customized just right. Use this image and it'll work. And in worst case scenario, when you run updates, it tries to pull a new kernel down and everything falls flat on its face. Or when you run updates, it just blacklists the kernel. And you never ever get kernel updates for it again. Right. And these are this is sort of the limbo that a lot of these SBCs fall into. And then you have other companies that do a really good job, like Raspberry Pi, of keeping their images up to date, you know, giving people a, an update system that works and also pushing things upstream into the Linux kernel. Sometimes it doesn't happen as fast as we would like, but you still you see evidence that it's going on. Um, so, yeah, I've I've had talk talk with several people over the last week that have looked at this news one one guy i'm working with he's an intellectual engineer he's like it's not good man it's not good <laughs> i mean at least it's not broadcom it's true it could be worse there are worse companies <laughs> yeah. that could have bought arduino and for those that don't know qualcomm is a pretty big player in the semiconductor world yeah they do a lot of wireless stuff yeah they're uh just based on market cap they're like number 11. Mm -hmm. so i mean they're they're in the top 20 semiconductor companies in the world yes and it's just one of those that companies that you don't hear a, a, i mean we hear some of but we don't fully hear everything they do because a lot of it just goes into background things that 
you know, they're selling chips to a lot of companies and industries that outside of the consumer market. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe, maybe having a, a, you know, a big company like Qualcomm take them in, uh, you know, it, it could be really bad or, you know, maybe it could be good. Maybe they could kind of play off of the raspberry Pi success and kind of get into that crowd. If they, if they do things right, you know, if, I mean, it, it boils down to what happens at every other company, right? If you put somebody in charge of it that has a clue, it's going to go well. If you put a bean counter in charge of it, or in this case, somebody that just has no idea how the open source ecosystem works is not going to go well. And so it all it all boils down to who they put in there as management. Uh, yeah. You know, some people are are all out there for the open source ecosystem and others have been and are kind of pulling away, but we'll talk more about that. <laughs> talk about that in a second. <laughs> yes. Um, did either of you guys get your start sort of with Arduino? Mm -hmm. Was that, was that in your, in your past? Okay. Uh, I was, for the longest I, time I, I had an Arduino board sitting here and now I, I, I clean my, I clean my office and now I can't find anything, but I have like an Arduino demo of a, board that's around here somewhere if i find i'll, I'll uh, date myself a little bit my dad kind of got me into some of this just with some old heath kits mm -hmm. like heath candy kit. bar no like heath heath kit used to be a big uh do-it-yourself build like tube testers and radios and yeah i've got a i've got a radio that picks up everything that my dad built with um tubes and whatnot and so I, i've helped him work on that and other things that my cool. starts with the little breadboard and you put like a light here or maybe a fan here and a connector here and <laughs> yeah so one of the one of the I, first sort of hobbyist electronics things that i ever did was i got one of the original arduinos one of the ones that had a usb port on it and cool. i punched that into a breadboard because the, the the spacing on the leads are just right that you can actually just take it and drop it into one of those breadboards. And then onto that, I put uh, a couple of relays and I then used the Arduino to control lights in my bedroom growing up. And, you know, then I, I you know, I had it connected over USB. And so I was using the computer to send the commands via serial over the USB to turn them on and off. And then I, I created a web page that, you know, you would click on the link and it would make the light go on and off. And that was, you know, that was 20 years ago, more than 20, probably about 20 years ago. Um, that was my first experience really with a lot of the tinkering stuff, getting, getting hands on. It, it was the first time that it was like, I made something on the computer, actually do something in the real world. And that was, that was kind of a cool moment. If you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out the Untitled Linux Show. You can find us in your favorite podcasting app or subscribe to our YouTube channel down in the links below. See you there.